So it is summer, hence the look. But I am prepping for back to school and I thought I would bring you along. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Vincent. I am a fourth grade teacher in upstate South Carolina and I am going into my 19th year of teaching, which is crazy. But I wanna sort of walk you through the process of how I began prep for back to school. It is actually July 5th and I try not to do a whole lot of school stuff until after the 4th of July, which apparently I'm taking very seriously this year and doing it the day after. But step one for me is to sort of get my ideas out and visualize what I want in my classroom. So let me take you over to the computer. So I am just working in PowerPoint. I find it easier to manipulate. Um, images and shapes and things like that. This is actually my setup from last year, except for this, I've already started playing with it a little bit. So basically what I do is I take different pictures of my classroom. I mean, you can see here that it's from the 20, like last May. So I was going to actually take new pictures, but as you know, on the last day I fell, so I didn't get any pictures done. So this was, my setup pretty much from last year. If you saw any of my classroom setups or my classroom tour, you see how these are similar to how I set it up last year. So I've just started playing with some things, which is why you can kind of see. So I just add in shapes and this is just a screenshot of something else from another picture that I took or text box of what I wanted to say. I try to make it, I mean, it's not like perfect, but you get the idea. Um, so like here you can see, I like found an image on the internet because I want my globe and my little lion up there. Um, here I have posters that were not gonna be there. So I just took a screenshot of a cabinet and covered it up just so I can sort of visually see what I'm doing. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. This seven habits display is normally on this wall. And because I had to take everything off the walls they're painting this year, I decided I want to move this display because I'm gonna have a taller bookshelf there and I want it to go there. I tried to put it there and it just wasn't working for me. So I just created the shapes. The This filing cabinet won't be there. That won't be there. I could probably take a screenshot. I mean, this is back when we had plexiglass. so. It's a hot mess is really what it is. But what this does is begin to help me figure out, okay, what do I need for each wall? What can I go ahead and create on the computer, print and laminate? So when it is time for a classroom setup, I am ready to go. So I also use this to sort of plan out a bulletin board. This is what I originally started with. And then I uh, copied it and pasted it onto this. I got this idea from mailing call from Mrs. Call's camper. She has a whole video giving lots of detail of how to do this for yourself. So I will link that down below in the comments so you can go check out her tutorial because that's what I watched to figure out how to do this. Um, but it really is just a matter of making shapes and adding colors like these are just triangles. I just colored it, color matched it to the wall, found some images from the internet and making it work. All right, I'm working on this area here. I have a brown bookshelf that will be moved over there and I'm getting one of those Trofast systems from Ikea. And I searched online for an image and all the images are angled. And so I just created one with boxes and then I covered up what was on the wall back here with just some wall colored boxes as well. So I wanted to show you because I am been thinking about getting some sort of tapestry to hang up in my room and I'm not really sure which one I want to go with. So this is where my students are going to have their book boxes stored and then this is going to be student supplies. So I thought about like maybe a reading one would look good up there. So I just googled, um, oh bad glare, reading tapestries and I found this one. And so all I'm going to do is copy the image and then I'm going to, oops, I don't want to paste it. So it has this white background that I don't really want. So you just go up to picture format and then click remove background. And you can see it kind of takes some of this out. Um, so 
I can try. It's not very intuitive to keep, I mean, I'm gonna try to tell PowerPoint that I want these areas. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it worked in that case, and then I'll do it over here. There is a website called like Remove Background or something. I could do it in Canva. It also allows you to do it. Um, but I don't want to go through all that steps just for like basically an idea. So I got most of them. So I'm just going to shrink that down. Um, it probably won't be that big. It'll probably be that big. And decide like, is that the look? Oh, let it focus. Is that the look I'm going for? Or do I want to do something else? Because I've thought about doing like a tapestry with the world map. Um, so I'm going to kind of play around with two different ones to see which ones I like the best. All right. So I have finished up sort of my design, what I think I want. So now what I'm doing is in my notebook, I have a notebook that I've, gosh, I have used since, let's see what the first date says. Cause I use the same notebook every year, 2015. So it's going on seven years usually holds just sort of like my back to school lists and then ideas I have throughout the year of how I want to upgrade and do things differently. It's not like a note where I take or a notebook that I take like notes and meetings and things like that. I mean sometimes I do but not not usually. Anyway so I'm making my list of things I want to buy which I'm kind of glad that I'm doing it this week because next week is Amazon Prime Day so I'm hoping maybe some of this will be on sale like a tapestry or something. I don't know. So I'm making a list from this of what I need to buy and what I need to make on the computer. A quick little tip that could help you when organizing your digital files is in my school folder, I have my back to school folder. And then I create a folder for each school year so that I know what resources I used last year. So as I'm going and prepping, I will look at all of these and when I use them, I will drag it into my, sorry, they're glowing. I don't know what they're doing outside the window, but I will drag it into my new folder for this year so that um, I have that ready to go. And then anything I don't use, I will sort back into where it needs to go after the school year has started. So it's only been a couple seconds for you, but it's been a whole week for me since working on some back to school prep. So last week I did all the computer work and then this week, as you can hear, I am printing, cutting, and laminating. So I have already printed out all of this. The majority of this is for classroom setup. It's either going on my wall or there's several like labels. I'm going to put on some storage boxes in my cabinets. And then currently I am printing uh, the cover page for Meet the Teacher. And then I'm going to go ahead and print my contact cards so that those can be done. I'm kind of in a printing, cutting session. I have, I'll show you. I have my paper cutter set up here so I can cut the things with straight lines. And then this is just pages that did not print correctly. And then I have my favorite scissors that I like to use when I am cutting things out because they're spring loaded. So they do not hurt your thumb when cutting. And then I have my laminator heating up, my laminating pages. So I'm gonna uh, get some of this done today. So or now some of that I'm going to work on while I am watching TV tonight but I also wanted to show you this so I am making letters for my wall and I printed them on black cardstock so I just in PowerPoint put one letter per page 
and then I just did a black outline because I want my letters black and then print it on black so I'm saving ink so the only ink is the outline but you can see when you print it out you can still see it on the black paper and it saves you ink. Been a couple hours I have gotten a lot done I'm gonna show you what I've done and a couple of little tips that I have when doing letters and a mistake I made I'm not happy about it it's gonna make my life harder but whatever all right so here we are I have I printed off the cover for my parent packets this is from Miss West Best on TP. I just like her whole packet. And then, so I printed those. I do it in color. It's one of the few things I do in color for parents. Normally I print like on colored paper, but with HP Instant Ink, it just makes it a lot easier. I also printed off my contact cards. I also do these in color. I think these are the only two things I really do in color as far as what goes to my parents. These are in my Meet the Teacher pack on TPT. I'll link all of this below. The rest of the stuff, well, these I do have, so I'll link all of this below. Everything else I just made. So these are actually time stamps or time in five minute increments for my schedule. Um, the ones I currently have have the time and the, let me hold on. So the ones I currently have in my classroom kind of look like this. Um, but it's honestly just too far away for some of my students. So I wanted to go with a bigger one um, and then there's also the clock. So all of this is in my like time, visual time schedule, but I decided to go with this option, even though you have all three in your pack. And I basically did all of them from 6.55 until 2.20. We get out of school at 2.15. Um, I did print this one, but I'm not gonna cut those because I don't think I need them. All right, so the rest, like I said, I just sort of created these are different labels for my uh, Sterilite bins in my storage cabinets. So I have like the skinny ones. I have a, I don't know. They're just different sizes. I took measurements and made those. I'm not laminating them because they're gonna go in my cabinet. And then let's see, I did my um, seven habits for a leader in me school. So I read, did the habits. We had to take everything off our wall to for them to paint over the summer. So I was like, well, I might as well fix them because this this part was in a cursive font and my students couldn't read it. So I just redid those. Um, so we'd have that. Then I cut out my letters and the white letters. This is going on the front. It says language. Um, and I just wanted to show you this trip trick. My background is black. So instead of trying to cut out the middle, I just took a Sharpie. I don't know if you can see and just colored in the middle. And I did that on, I use the same, the same font on my goals letters on my bulletin board and did that with the A and I think I cut out the O cause it's bigger, but you couldn't even tell. So I went with that and then let's see. 
The other thing I did was I started cutting out my black letters. And so this is just my last name and I already have the miss and I'm going to put that over by my area. But I showed you guys how you can print on black paper and you have the lines, but don't make this mistake. If you laminate before, I was trying to save myself a step. Instead of cut, laminate, cut, I just wanted to laminate, cut. It's really hard to see that line with the reflection. So I would cut, laminate, cut. So now that's why I haven't cut these out because <laughs> they're just, it's harder to see. So that's going to, that's going to be a sitting in front of the TV type of task. But I did also, whoops, want to show you this hack. So this is going up on my wall. And so instead of trying to bend it and cut out, I just cut straight through because when it's up on the wall, you can barely tell that it's been cut. So like if you're up close, yes, you can see the cut. I can, I'll even put it on a different background. You, I mean, yes, but if far away, you can't tell. Um, I apologize for this bad lighting. It decided to storm outside. But my last um, thing, I just kind of put everything in little baggies just so I don't have pieces floating all around. And then um, if I want to make sure, like these are kind of flimsy, so I don't want these to bend. So I'll probably put them in here. And um, put, actually I probably won't put that, but I'll put all of this stuff in my um, book bag so that I am ready to go in I think two weeks is when I'm gonna head back into my classroom to start setting up because all of this is class set up. And then I still have to tackle these. Oh, not looking forward to that. Well, that wraps up this portion of back to school prep. Uh, most of everything else besides cutting those letters out will just be working on my slideshows and first week lesson plans, which I do actually plan on sharing with you guys. That probably won't happen till sometime in August that that video will be out because I'll kind of work on it a little bit so it won't be ready before then. But video coming out soon about how to set up your classroom efficiently so that you can get it done quickly. Kind of like what I'm doing where you're doing some prep ahead of time and you just kind of do a couple extra steps to make sure you are ready to go. And then I have, I think I'm gonna do a back to school haul. Some things that I have uh, actually just started purchasing. Got a couple books, a couple of things. I'm going to the teacher supply store this weekend to get some border just to kind of show you what I'm doing. And then classroom setup vlogs are coming very soon. So make sure you have subscribed, make sure the bell notifications on so you see when those videos go. And if you enjoyed behind the scenes of back to school prep, give this video a like and I will make more videos like this. Hope you guys have a great day.